Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a problem dealing with dimensional analysis. And it turns out that's a really important concept in physics because many times things have been solved in physics, not just homework problems or test problems, but in the science itself, in the research itself, we've solved things simply by matching units. So dimensional analysis is very important. So here we have a problem. It says match list one with list two. Seems simple enough. So we have two lists. On the left side, list one has Planck's constant, kinetic energy, electrical potential, and linear momentum. Ooh, we're missing an A here. Let's put an A in there. Linear momentum. And on the right side, we have ML t to the negative one, ML squared t to the negative two, ML squared t to the negative three, ML squared i to the negative one, t to the negative three, and that i means current. That may not be apparent when you see it. And then we have four combinations. One of those combinations is correct, where we're matching an item on the left side with an item on the right side. So let's go ahead and go through all those four. Now remember that you have to actually know some of these things because they don't give you Planck's constant. If you don't know Planck's constant or the units associated with it, you may have trouble doing this particular problem. Well, the units for Planck's constant are joules times seconds. So for part A, we have joules times seconds. Now, a joule is a newton meter, so that's equal to a newton meter times seconds. And a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So this is the same as a kilogram meter per second squared times meter times seconds. Notice that one of these seconds counts out those seconds, so you have kilograms meter squared per second. For B, we have kinetic energy which is one half mv squared, which means that we have mass, which is kilograms, and velocity, which is meters per second, but we have to square it. So we end up with kilograms meters per second squared. That doesn't look very nice here. Let me try it again. I, write, I like to write seconds as SEC, if you're not used to that. For electrical potential, so what we can say is that voltage can be calculated by multiplying the electric field times the distance if it's uniform and the electric field can be expressed in terms of um, uh, let's see newton so unit wise electric field can be in newtons per coulomb times distance which is meters now we know what a newton and a meter is but how about a coulomb well we know by definition that the current i is equal to dq dt the amount of current the amount of charge passing per unit time so we can see that Coulomb, which is charge, can be written as current times time. Current times time. So then this becomes a Newton, which is a kilogram meter per second square times a meter. Coulomb is now going to be current times time, so it would be current or amps times time, which is seconds. So notice we end up with kilograms meter squared per second cube times amps for current. And finally, linear momentum, that's m times v. So the units are going to be kilograms times meters per seconds. So Planck's constant, A, is going to be kilogram meter squared per second. So kilogram is meters, uh, I mean mass. Meters is length squared, so a meter square length square divided by time to single point. So Planck's constant matches up, and I'll use a different color. Planck's constant matches up with number two. So A is associated with two. For part B, we have kilogram meter square per second squared. So that gives us mass, distance squared, divided by time squared. So B kinetic energy matches that one and let me use red again so b matches up with three on the electrical potential notice we end up with kilograms meter square per second cube per amp so that means this one here right so we have mass length squared time to the third power in the denominator and current in the denominator so that means that electrical potential matches up with four and finally the last one of course linear momentum uh, that's kilogram meters per second, mass, length, divided by time. So that means that this matches up 
with that one. And then you can start matching things up. So for A, we need 2. That's right here. For B, we need 3, which is right here. For C, we need 4. And for D, we need 1. So that means that we found the solution. A is the correct answer. Ignore the other 3. Now, that took quite a bit of time to go through all that. Is it really necessary to find every one of them, or can you do it more quickly by finding one or two and move on to the next problem? The answer is yes, you can do that more quickly. So we're going to do this problem again and find a shortcut method to get to the correct answer. So stay tuned and we'll try another one of these. But if you want to work through all four of them and you find the definitions appropriate, you can find the answer quite readily like that as well. And that is how it's done.